If you're using objects in JavaScript to store arbitrary key value pairs, where you'll be adding and deleting keys frequently, you should really consider using a map instead of a plain object. So whereas with objects, where the delete operator is notoriously poor performing, maps are optimized for this exact use case, and in some cases can be seriously faster, you can find this benchmark and some others in my blog post. Browser vendors themselves also recommend maps if you want better performance for frequently adding and removing key value pairs compared to a plain object which is not optimized for this use case. But maps also solve for several issues that exist with objects. For instance, objects are polluted with tons of keys built into them already. So if you try and access any of these properties, each of them will have values already, even though this object is supposed to be empty, which can lead to some really strange and hairy bugs later on. Whereas with a map, you always know that if you did not provide a key, you will not get a value. As a result of this, iteration with objects has some ugly gotchas, like needing to check has own property when iterating. But even that has gotchas, as it can be overwritten accidentally. So really you should do this ugly thing, which is safer, or use object.keys to similarly avoid those gotchas. But maps don't have any of those gotchas. You can simply iterate through a map, getting its key and value pairs, and it always works as you'd expect. What's even cooler is maps will preserve the order of keys, and because they are iterable, you can use destructuring to grab the first key and value pair out of a map or at any other index you like. Now you might say, oh, well, objects have some advantages, like they're very easy to copy, for instance, using an object spread or a sign. But maps are equally easy to copy. Because they're iterable, just make a new map with the old map as the first argument. You can also deep clone maps using structured clone, just like you can with objects as well. Converting maps to objects is equally easy using object.from entries, and going the other way is easy as well. Just use object.entries for that. So creating a map from an object can have an almost identical DX to just creating an object. But maps can also do things objects just cannot do at all. As maps are not limited to only having strings as keys, you can use any type of object as a key for a map, which is really useful for setting metadata on an object without affecting that object. For instance, maybe you want to set metadata about a DOM node that you want to look up later but not write to the DOM node itself. Well, now you can save arbitrary values to any object without actually polluting that object at all. This can be particularly handy when you have objects synced to a database, but you want to apply some temporary in-memory state to them, such as is this event focused, without actually writing to that object, so when we save it back to the database, only the values we want saved are there, and our temporary state is saved separately in our map. Now, this does have one issue, though. Because we're saving a reference to my events, if we've already removed all other references to this object, and normally the garbage collector would collect this object and remove it from memory, because our map is holding reference, it'll never be garbage collected. But that's where we also get the weak map type. Weak maps perfectly solve for this, as they hold a weak reference to the object. So if all other references are removed, the object will automatically be garbage collected and removed from this weak map. And if we're talking about maps, we should also mention their cousin, sets which give us a better performing way to create unique lists of elements where we can add, remove, and look up if a set contains an item, which can have considerably better performance compared to doing those same operations on an array. You can find this benchmark in the blog post as well. Now, you might say there's one last advantage that plain objects and arrays have over maps and sets, and that's that object to arrays can simply be JSON stringified and parsed to serialize and deserialize. This can in fact be extremely handy compared to a map it doesn't have built-in JSON stringify support. But have you ever noticed that when you want to pretty print JSON, you always have to put a null here? Do you know what that argument actually can do? As it turns out, something really helpful for us. It's called a replacer, and it allows us to define how any custom type should be serialized. So we can simply say, if value instance of map, we can simply convert it to an object. And now maps convert to JSON perfectly. We can even do the same for sets by converting them to an array for serialization. We can even deserialize maps using the reviver argument in json.parse. For instance, we can check if the value is an array and return a set, or if it's an object, return a map, otherwise return the value as is. And also note that revivers and replacers work recursively. So you can have maps and objects anywhere inside of your JSON trees. And still this one tiny function, which we can abstract away for simple reuse, can make sure you're perfectly serializing and deserializing maps and sets anywhere in a JSON tree. And if you want to be even fancier, you can make this more powerful by supporting both maps and objects, as well as sets and arrays, by creating a simple serialization format, which I'll include this code and how it works in my full blog post. So 
When should you use an object versus a map and a set versus an array? For structured objects that have a well-defined set of keys, such as every event should have a title and a date, you generally want an object. They're very optimized for fast reads and writes. When you have a fixed set of keys, when you can have any number of keys, and you may need to add and remove keys frequently, consider using a map for better performance and ergonomics. When creating an array where the order of elements matter, and you may intentionally want duplicates in the array, then a plain array is generally a great idea. But when you know you never want duplicates, and the order of items doesn't matter, consider using a set. Learn more useful things you can solve with maps and sets, as well as find all the code examples I showed here in my latest blog post on the builder.io blog.